Hey, how you doing? This is Matt Connors, and I'm continuing on this series to describe use of AI text to image models and also image edit models that you can find on the web and then paint over techniques that you can use. Mostly in my case, it'll be Photoshop or Sketchbook Pro. In this case, you're seeing Sketchbook Pro, which I've described as a pretty straightforward interface. Uh, it's got a brush library. Uh, you can edit your brushes pretty easily. Also, there's lots of sets of brushes online and the layer structure is similar to what you'd find in Procreate or Photoshop or, or anything like that. So in this view, what you see right now is a stable diffusion image that was created with um, with a text prompt that was something like this ink drawing on paper like the steampunk pilot now i liked i like the overall result it was a little bit too detailed it doesn't really match what would be my style so a lot of times i'm trying to figure out how i can take something that started in an ai engine and then modify it to meet what my expectations would be for for making an image so i've been using and i described in a in a previous video using a render it allows you to take a sketch or drawing or even a photograph and modify it. It's called VizCom. And first, let me just show you a little bit the extension that I made. So the original image for Stable Diffusion was, was kind of too cramped, right? It didn't show the full figure here, his legs. And it was also pretty trimmed off in terms of the background images. There's, it almost looks like you know, some kind of manufacturing tower or something like that, which uh, I thought was a little bit too tight in terms of the composition. So this is one thing that I often see with the AI image models that it doesn't give you quite what you need in terms of drawing your eye through the image. I'm not sure exactly why, but uh, I decided it needed a little bit more room to breathe, especially to allow this figure enough room. And I thought it looked kind of like he was standing in something. So I wanted that to be more like a, um, a puddle or a swamp or something that's the whole reason why this this mech is stuck so to make it more about the narrative of the pilot of this mech being stuck and trying to figure out you know what his next step might be so i'm going to switch for a second to viscom to kind of show you now i've described in a previous video that you can upload content into viscom you can import files to to start this one i had imported the stable diffusion image with the extension in Photoshop rather than doing the extension after I found out I found that would give me a little bit more flexibility in terms of what it created. So first I tried just kind of the standard rendering modules. And this is pretty interesting because it expanded significantly the canvas. They also made it more photorealistic or hyper-realistic, but um, it took a bit of the attention away from the central characters. I felt like this might be too much. And also there's all this kind of background area with the pipes. I kind of, maybe I'll pursue this a little bit later on, but it took me pretty far away from what I wanted with the drawing. And also made the center piece very dark. So I tried something that I don't normally do. I tried using the pastel render within VizCom. And I really like this kind of smoky quality that it gave it and the and this, more of a monochromatic, the, the blues and greens were really more of like an aqua. But then it did a strange thing is, is it, it took the original image and, and extended it, but it kind of trimmed it off in an odd way. So I felt like I could use the center part of the image more than anything else. I like the figure, the idea that it was, was um, a more simplified version of this outfit, this kind of flak jacket almost something. Uh, I like the way that looked, and I like that it added a sash. The helmet, though, it was kind of inconclusive, and it um, didn't indicate much of a face. In the original image, the face wasn't very detailed either, but um, I felt like now we had something to work with, so I pulled it back into Sketchbook Pro. So how you might work with something, so this is very different, the kind of line quality that exists here, and then in the VizCom image, I'm just going to turn this on for a second and show you the VizCom render import. So it's, it's pretty significantly different. And what I found is that to blend these two together, what I could do is I could use, I could use an overlay. So it's actually at a pretty low opacity, this overlay. And it's, it's a pretty tight combination between the elements from the VizCom and Stable Diffusion. But I found that then I needed something a little bit more in terms of the detail on the face. So I started this, it's not complete yet. But what I did here is I added 
I just started drawing in the face and the method for this was pretty straightforward. I started using a pen tool, which right up here, uh, just a very simple ballpoint pen, I believe this is. And, um, and then just, you know, found a nice dark edge and I started creating that right on top of here. Um, now I, I like to keep my layers a little bit separate until I am confident that I like the way they look. And I'm just adding some kind of sketchy details in here. Now, there's a little bit of a difference between the line quality in the background and the foreground, but I wanted to match as close as possible the kind of width of line. See, that's pretty close match to the background. Now, this is a little bit more faded. The idea is it's sitting back further than the pilot here because he's standing more in the foreground. So this is still to be worked out, but it just shows you how you might be able to merge some very different styles using Viscom and Stable Diffusion. This is a bit of a shorter video. And what I found is that then I needed to match a little bit further. This was kind of fun. I could take just a gradient layer and I'm just gonna shift this. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And increase the opacity for a second and just show you a normal. So it's just a gradient layer that I created in Sketchbook Pro and then shifted it to Color Burn. And that gives you a sense of the light that's coming. It looks like from the kind of right to left or kind of up to down, upper right to lower left. It allows you to have more of that kind of shadow casting over the, the image itself. And for me, that seems to tie it together a little bit more. Not a complete image for sure, but I think this starts to be more successful than either of the originals in the, and when I say originals, the stable diffusion is too busy for me. Some people might love the style, but it, it doesn't really match the way I would work. And then this was maybe a bit too smoky. I'm finding a bit more of a combination in between the two, but there's some pieces that needed to be edited here. I think there's too much on the edge here. I'm not crazy about this sort of mushroom shape. I might modify this, but um, that's a whole lot closer. And I really like the way this character is starting to look. It kind of reminds me of something uh, Ian McHugh might do. Um, maybe I need to modify it because it looks to my mind, maybe to Ian McHugh. And he's got this great, I don't know if you've ever seen that illustrator, he's got a great sketchy style. His style is more like, I would say, uh, the stable diffusion. Although I think he's, his lines aren't, um, they're not as rounded and as organic. They tend to be tighter and more angular. If um, And I don't think he would add quite as much detail in here, or maybe it would make more sense in his Every once in a while I see lines that are going in directions that, uh, that don't make a ton of sense to me with the AI images or they don't follow contours properly, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's, that's often why I want to kind of back off on what the AI creates. So that's, uh, that's where we are in this one. And I will update when I, when I finish this image. We're pretty close. All right, thanks so much.